Sitios Altios Fortios. Hello everybody and welcome to today's episode. This is your host Nino and now we shall explore a way out of the misery of modern Android which does not commonly any longer allow us to execute things from applications directories the way we were used to doing perchance from earlier Android versions. In particular issues started apparently to appear from Android 10 onwards, that is 10 the last reasonable version and 11 starting to be finicky. So I was used to, you know, putting things into my terminal emulator's home directory and just somehow running them from there. But no matter what I was doing and I was exploring all sorts of directories here, I didn't get any place that would le let me execute thing things. However, there is a group of programs which somehow by definition should allow you to do such a thing and these are evidently the compilers. Because the compilers need after all to do just that what we just saw, namely turn source code into some form of binary, run it, show you the output and then, you know, let you re-edit the source code if you wanted to. And that means that somewhere there is a directory with stuff are running and the only thing you need is to get to the terminal which not all but many apps do let you so this one for instance some something called cxx droid is having here a terminal and yeah i'm not even sure it starts in this one no let's say it starts here and yeah like let's say you're in some sort of stupid directory like this one. And the only thing you need to do actually is to say echo path because somewhere this application likely will be that you would like to, to reach, right? And like to reach after you compile it. So here we are having, as you can see on the top, something called data user zero ru blah 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 cxx droid slash files and slash files bin and and so on and, and something with sysroot bin so essentially uh we we got from here the executable directory and that can be similarly observed for instance in this one c4 droid this one seems to be extremely a reasonable in running apps. The previous one was more often complaining about uh, somehow improper execution format or something like that. Whereas this one was just, just happily taking stuff and running stuff. So again, when we make an echo path, you see on the top we are getting some form of data user zero com no name or no name droid c slash files directory and, and, and so on. So <laughs> we get an idea of where stuff might be situated and where we can place perchance binaries and run them. Now the thing is, uh, this, this turns out to be not, not quite entirely trivial because how do you place stuff uh, there? And some of these, um, some of these compilers, unfortunately, do not seem to get access to the entire file system, but only to the media. You know, this 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 fun permission, give access just to media files. <laughs> and what that was meaning was was plainly ridiculous, because I'll show you now how I progressed here, a little bit. So I just made a little text file reminding me of where to get in order to look at the fun stuff, basically. So here, for instance, when I copy this change directory command, this is going to get me in this compiler where BusyBox is. And it does actually have a different and perhaps better busy box in some regards than my other compiler and 
you can see that up here in the BusyBox version. So here we are having, a, as you can see in the second line here, a BusyBox of version 1.310. And in my other place, uh, let me go to my nice text file again. Haha. -ha. Here, I'm having a somewhat older BusyBox. Okay, like if I run it here. So it's again a busy box, but the capabilities are somewhat different. Uh, like this one cannot straight be replaced by the other one as it has these square bracket commands, which the other one doesn't have. So maybe I just would like to have both in one place. And as you can see, this is busy box version 1.271. So let's say I want to get the one executable from the one place to the other. And let's say that my compilers are having this access to the media, um, to the media files. What do you then do? Well, let's start again, CXX draw it. And <laughs> very funny, uh, it, it, it keeps doing that. It keeps throwing me into the root directory, which is profoundly useless to me, but I keep fighting with going with CD somewhere and just trying to be in the right place. Anyway, what you then need to do is to cat. And I mean that cat, not copy your desired application with a ridiculous file ending. Yeah, okay, do it again, but this time I can up arrow. Or generally speaking, I don't even need to because the copy command was that way. And you cat the busy box into the pictures as a PNG file. I think also 3GP and MKV worked. The art here is to give it an image extension. If I wouldn't give it an image extension, it was sometimes bitching that it doesn't have the rights to write there. Like, let me try. Eh, can't create, operation not permitted. Oh my God, that's not an image. Who knows what this, what this untrustworthy person is trying to do. Calling it PNG. Oh gosh, file exists, okay. Uh, let's call it just busy PNG. Okay, so I catted it into busy PNG. And I was having issues trying to copy it. It was when I was copying files, somehow keeping track of where is from where and, and throwing me permission errors left and right. But if I was catting things, it was apparently somehow losing track of what I'm doing. I was just creating the file and everything was, you know, pretty normal. So here I'm having now a busy, PNG file created out of my busy box, which suddenly is allowed <laughs> as long as you change the extension. I mean, really? Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't whine, right? Like this is what I wanted. I wanted to be able to get it there. And now I can equally copy this file. I'll have to change this command just ever so slightly because unfortunately it's not called BusyBox, it's called Busy. Uh, oh no, wrong one. Oopsie, just the letter one, which is restoring the whole thing. Bear with me, took me a while to figure this out. So here we are now going to be catting our Busy PNG now in the other C compiler, where we want to have it, in its terminal, into a file. Okay, great. So now that we're here, let's change the proper directory. We got it. We did successfully cat it and it, not, it did not prohibit us from doing so by keeping track of what we were doing, but really we did transport the file. And if we now say 
list what's here, you can see here busy PNG, just above BusyBox. And we don't want to erase BusyBox, so we will simply move it to uh, BusyBox2. Busy.png goes into BusyBox2. All right. And then we, we ha will have to also change the mode of this thing into something less ridiculous. All right, and when I now try to execute it, ta-da! I now have the other programs busy box into this compiler directory. And I can now run both. And if I say busy box and C, for instance, for Netcat, see it has a couple of options. L, E, P, W, I, F, and T. But if I try BusyBox 2 and C, it's actually more capable and has even more options. And that way, <laughs> in the in the no name or no name C compilers, C for Droid directory, I can run all sorts of things. And of course, I. <sighs> How did I call it? call it basic. I do have a basic interpreter here. Yeah. So print victory at last. And that way we can still execute things somewhere <laughs> in the file system though of course now confined to let's say the more exclusive apartments of the c compilers rather than uh, in the more rustic habitats of, of the terminal emulators nonetheless this is a little bit more satisfactory and <laughs> while I really am fond of BC and it seems to be sort of the lingua franca of low level confined environments, it still is a better feeling to be able to transport things around and run them at will. And with that, thank you very much for joining today. I hope to greet you here soon again. Until then, have a wonderful time. And from me, goodbye.